Wow. It is uh, 14 minutes past the hour, and of course, that means time for Sporty Monday begins now. We have a beautiful show lined up for you. We'll be delving deep into the aborted FKF AGM, thanks to a court directive. And of course, in Germany, the Bundesliga is on. The Red Devils, they got some spark, albeit luck, or whichever way you want to call it. They are so happy. But of course, it was Bahati. We're going to be delving into that in a short while. Remember, we also have a guest analyst in the frame of Rafael Omala, who is a sports lawyer. He'll be breaking it down for us, the FKF statutes, the FIFA statutes, and what it means. And of course, in the big conversation or the quick fire, we have today the British High Commissioner to Kenya, his Excellency Neil Wigan. You don't want to miss that, but first things first, I have my panelists ready to break it down for you. To my immediate right is Steve Shitera. How are you, Mr. Shitera? I'm good, mm -hmm. uh, very fresh from Dandora Stadium. Mm. Um, I hope uh, Governor Mike Mbuvi Songo was given uh, his term to completion. Uh, I know you will have done more than Dora stadiums because he had lined up like three. Look at it now. Mm -hmm. Magnificent. You will think you are uh, in Leeds United. <laughs> <laughs> but all the same, yeah. a very sporty weekend it was. Uh, AGM, uh, Boshon, I saw it coming and I think we will discuss more. Okay. So you feel uh, your friend Sonko should have been there too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, the plan he had uh, up to 2022 because uh, his term was cut short three years into uh, the next general election and he had already uh, launched the construction of Dandora Stadium. In fact, he had done 80%. 80%. It was just laying of the carpet that was so done that's by a the, to, the current a regime. challenge to Governor Sakaja. Governor Sakaja, he should replicate the same, mm. just the same to City Stadium. And I think uh, three more. You can see what good infrastructure can do to a community. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was evident. And of course, we are still waiting on uh, the pledge to rename City Stadium after the legendary Joe Kadenge. Mm -hmm. I don't think just, it has... Don't just rename uh, it. No, not just the name. Yes. Uh, constructing, constructing it to fit the bill. Absolutely. Isia, Hujambo, Haligani? Sijambo. Um, it was a nice weekend again, like uh, he has put it. And um, what spoiled is, is the issue of uh, the, the, the AGM. Uh, for the record, it is uh, him and I that were accredited from this house <laughs> <laughs> to go and cover that age. I, I wish you carried the, the badges. <laughs> I, I left the tax because now they, they are of no use anymore uh, uh, after, after the uh, court order. Mm -hmm. And uh, really, why it is uh, quite a discussion, uh, and I've been saying it here, uh, that the elections, FKF elections have been a debate more than one year before the, 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 the actual date. Yeah, and uh, it was such an anticlimax because uh, everything is set up to Friday evening, then we get the court order. What we'll be discussing today, and uh, I really want us it to come clearly, is this one is coming at whose interest, in whose interest? Mm -hmm. Because if we get a court order on the eve of the AGM, supposed to give us the roadmap for, to the elections, then the question is, who is benefiting with this? Absolutely. Who is orchestrating this? We'll be going deep into that. And of course, we have Ziti Jimoy, Hujambo. <laughs> Sijambo. I, I didn't get it's... the memo of, of the blue. <laughs> blue <word. laughs> You know, we were trying. We are trying to support Ashitera. You know, uh, Chelsea did very well. Uh, We've against, been doing well against Leicester. <laughs> <laughs> against Leicester, they were two. Uh, two up, and then it came 2-2, two, two, and then they scored uh, uh, another two goals to four. It ended 2-4-2. Two, two. Again, you don't want to talk about Manchester United because, you know, we we, we really... <laughs> was it a lucky win? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you are up against say, a very a win formidable is a win. side. A win, is a, win. A, win yeah. is a win. a goal is a goal. As long as you go to the next step. So we had in the semis, and um, it was a very good win for us because, hey, banters, because me to Maliza Sana Pale social media. But a good, good, another thing is uh, African games are going on, mm. and... Um, Mm -hmm. Volleyball teams, they are doing very well in, in the African Games in Accra. And of course, as I say today, we have with us Mr. Rafael Omala, who is a sports lawyer. He will be helping us dissect that 
FGM, FKF AGM, and of course, the court implication, what's the way forward? Karibu sana, Bwana Umala. Thank you very much for having me. Mm -hmm. Doing fantastic. Fantastic. Yes. You're looking forward to this. Yes. Uh, that's Mr. Umala, of course. He'll be uh, part of us today as a guest analyst. And of course, my name is Isaac Swiller. And now let's begin on the AGM and the Mombasa High Court on Friday temporarily blocked the much-anticipated FKF AGM that was to be held last Saturday at the Kenya Institute of Special Education here in Nairobi, throwing the FKF elections roadmap into limbo. The case that will be heard today before Lady Justice Olga Sewe will have a bearing on the FKF electoral process. And as Steve Shitera now reports, this year's polls is already generating heat, as was the case four years ago. At the 11th hour, a petition by U.S.-based Kenyan journalist Milton Nyakundi filed at the Mombasa High Court We want to categorically came as a shocker to the tough-talking FKF delegates who thought it was all clear for the FKF AGM. We shall alter the agenda to kick out anybody. The delegates on Friday held a press conference to fire a warning shot to purported strangers who intended to attend the FKF AGM that was due for Saturday at the Kenya Institute of Special Education Kise in Kasarani. Nan members hawa rusiwi popote pale karibu na sisi ama popote pale kwa chama chetu. I can say without winking that anyone who dares to come and disrupt our AGM We'll use everything in our power, everything legally. There's no point of you coming to, do, to, to, to come, coming where you're not invited, because everything is uh, set. And as a members, we are going to, 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 to protect what is our, 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 our interest. In his petition, Nyakundi argued that the FKF leadership lacked the legal authority to convene the AGM, pointing out a pending contempt of court case, emphasizing the need to protect the integrity of ongoing cases. Interim orders were issued by Lady Justice Olga Sewe, stopping FKF from proceeding with the meeting that had rather raised opposition from FKF Northeastern NEC member Dabar Ahmed Kadar and his Eastern counterpart Muraydi Nabea, who condemned the decision by the Federation to block Hussein Mohammed from attending the meeting. It is the fundamental right for a club to, to nominate its delegate. In fact, the Secretary General of FKF did write a letter requesting clubs to send the representatives. And if they had the representatives before, and I think they shouldn't have even written to start with. We will not accept anybody to use FKF as a personal property or to run how you want. We had the last NEC meeting on January and we had sent provocation for AGM for all delegates to attend. President Nick Mwendwa, if he want to put football into dispute in this country, we will not allow. FKF is not a private property and we are not going to allow anybody to take the right of members away. Murangasi, we have insisted we have our representative Nobody is going to stop our representative from attending. The meeting was expected to ratify the controversial FKF Electoral Code 2020, which was part of the resolutions passed by FKF's National Executive Committee, NEC, on January 6, 2024. Insiders at the Kandanda House also informed Sporty Monday of a plan to amend the FKF constitution on the floor which would have altered the term limit, giving the incumbent Nick Mwendwa the nod to run for another term in office, contrary to the second schedule of the Sports Act 2013. This comes barely a few days after the Federation's CEO Barry Otieno issued a letter to Muranga Sil informing the club of their decision to bar FKF presidential aspirant Hussein Mohammed who is associated with Muranga Seal from participating in the AGM, citing his alleged ineligibility. With the matter now in court, 
It's a wait and see scenario as football stakeholders follow with bated breath. Steve Shitera for Sporty Monday, Nairobi. Solid perspective there by Shitera, and that gives us the launch pad, so to speak, for this conversation. And I'll begin with you, uh, Zita. Uh, this talk of we will protect our interests. What do you make of that? You know, power is very sweet. So, um, talking about we will protect our interest is, um, I think they've already, the delegates have already made their decision. Because saying we'll protect our in interest, knowing that, of course, Misha Kachini, you've already made your decision, you already know who you're going to vote. So my question is, as, as I can say, um, from the other, we have two sides now. The other are saying we'll protect the interest. The other saying, do we want this person to come to the watch to the AGM? So the question is, you want this person to come to the AGM? And uh, again, he has, uh, a lot of people have been talking about he has an interest of being the watch, um, uh, being part of the, in the, um, wants to run for the president, for the FKF president. So are you, which, with the people, the delegates being up against you, where do you stand? So are you, you have to go back to the roots and know what the delegates want. You have to know what is happening in the game. You have to know what is, uh, what does these people want, you know? Because you just, you, 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 when you come outside saying that I want to run for this, you have to have uh, ideas on what, is happening in the ground. So for me, yes, he's supposed to go because that is the Muranga seal. He's going to, 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 to represent Muranga seal. Again, now the people are seeing like it's a conflict of interest. You've said you've been, a lot of, a lot of rumors have been said you want to run for FK president, you want to come to the AGM and what are we, we are doing, you want to see what we are doing, what you are laying back. So is it an, do, you, do you have an interest? You do, do you have another thing that you want to come and uh, do here at the, at the FK um, uh, AGM? So for me, I think uh, they were saying that maybe because of the interest they've, they've seen him wants to run for the presidential. And Wakili, let me bring you in here. How do we now proceed? Of course, the AGM was set for Saturday, then uh, the court injunction, albeit we are looking forward to uh, what the judge will direct today. But now, what do you make of that and how do we proceed? Well, there is, there's a lot to unpack, especially with the case itself, because essentially the petitioner Milton was saying FKF lacks even the capacity to convene the AGM. So you see, when you say somebody lacks the capacity to act, it means what he is what he's telling the court is FKF in its current state cannot exist, it cannot act. So you see, you have to look at it in the context of the previous ruling when we had the caretaker committee and there was, when the sports, act, sorry, the sports tribunal was saying mm -hmm. that the Gazette notice essentially kicked everybody out of office ex except the president. So the national executive and everybody who was elected at that time was kicked out of office. So in essence, at that time is what the petitioner in this case is relying on in saying that essentially there's a vacuum. And so I think this AGM was important so that we were on track to bring back FKF to the members because this is the first AGM, I think, since 2019 or pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. It must have been pre-COVID. Right. So you see, this was the perfect opportunity for members as the FKF to bring their house in order because you remember this was an elective AGM. Mm -hmm. So this was the AGM in which members were to elect people to form a new FKF which would have corrected everything that happened with the Gazette notice that essentially revoked or or kicked everybody out of office except the president. Mm -hmm. So that was the that is what we should look forward to the ruling which will come out of the High Court in Mombasa because that essentially that gives direction to how we are to proceed. Mm -hmm. You see, especially because now if they say that FKF lacks the capacity to act, then it leaves us in an even bigger limbo because now if they lack the capacity to, to act, who then, who then can make any binding decisions mm -hmm. that can run our football? I do not want to jump the gun, Wakili, but as you've said, it puts us in a limbo. We do not know what the, the judge uh, gonna rule, mm -hmm. but if he, if she's persuaded by the arguments or the prayers by Milton Yakundi that the AFK lacks the capacity to hold this AGM, mm -hmm. well, how do we proceed? 
if at all that would be the case? Well, the, again, what should have ought, ought to happen in this case then, mm. you see, I'm sure you've heard the word normalization committee being sure. thrown alone all the time. Mm -hmm. So normalization, essentially what happens when you normalize is to bring, to bring a situation to what it ought to be. Mm -hmm. So we'll have an interim body that will be set up to take us to the election so that FKF can return to its members, mm -hmm. so that football can be run as it ought to be. So if it is ruled indeed that these people do not have the capacity to convene this AGM, mm -hmm. essentially you're saying that nobody has the capacity to run football in this country. And absolutely, it's here. Matters of normalization committee, we've been there not once, not twice, not thrice. History is replete with us forming a normalization committee. And again, heading to these polls, again we find ourselves in a, in a, in a catch-22 situation, so to speak. Why is it that our elections are quite divisive? Last year, or not last year, but four years ago, when the current leadership came to office, we saw the Sport Dispute Tribunal annul these elections, not once, but twice at the branch level. Why do we have to always be uh, in this kind of situation? It's a fierce contest every time we go to the polls. Swila, uh, thank you very much. And uh, I want to build from where Wakili has just spoken mm -hmm. for the purpose of clarity that, um, you see, a note of a mistake in a line bears another one. One mistake bears another one. So the matter that uh, Nyakundi is relying on, so that he went to the court, was about the question whether FKF was supposed to be functioning now. And even FKF was challenging the same asking whether the Waziri, the former Waziri Amina Mohammed, had the powers to kick out FKF neck. That was the first debate even at the, at the tribunal. And you see that is what was upheld, that indeed she was within our powers to do that. But something that maybe Wakili has not mentioned, that I don't want to mention is that, you see, the law locally and the, what FIFA says was, there was actually a contradiction. And that's why that matter was never arrested. Why? Because FKF is kicked out with the powers of Waziri Amina Mohammed. Mm -hmm. Then that normalization committee that she wanted to form, you cannot form it alone as a, as a government. Mm -hmm. You have to have FIFA on board so that you initiate the process. Mm -hmm. FIFA comes on board and they become part of forming the committee. Now, what happened with FIFA last time? Fatuma Samora mm -hmm. wrote to the government of Kenya, to Waziri, saying that we believe what you have done is not within the law. FIFA statute. It amounted, according to them, to third party interference. Mm -hmm. That is what led to Kenya's suspension. So in essence, FIFA did not agree with, the, with Amina Mohammed. So if we go by this case again, if the, the judge today, if the court today was to uphold that indeed FKF leadership, the NEC, is not legally constituted, then the other question would be, how is FIFA going to react to this? Because if FIFA reacts positively, then there's a room for them to work with uh, the government to have the committee that uh, he alluded to. Mm -hmm. But if FIFA reacts negatively and says, no, we believe this one amounts to interference, then it's going to be a suspension. Mm -hmm. Now, the question that you asked, I've given that background, is that why do we find ourselves in this, in this kind of circles all the time? Mm -hmm. It is because of uh, some selfish interest that people have. And that's why I raised the question we were beginning when I was giving my opening remarks. Who is benefiting from this? Because essentially it means that with this court process, today the Mombasa the, the, the is going to hear the, the matter, is going to give, the FKF going to respond, you know, uh, to the issues raised, and then the case starts. Swila, for the status, a notice of an AGM is supposed to be given six months before anything starts. Mm -hmm. So it means we're, we're supposed to have the elections in October this year. Sure. They have been halted by this court order. We cannot predict how long this court case is going to take. But after this, whatever time it's going to be over, and the process starts again, there will be a six-month uh, you know, period of notice yes. and all that, meaning that we cannot have an election this year already. So already, we have pushed the change that he was talking about that would have come whether people are seeking fresh bandit or other people coming in by at least maybe one year. And that's actually what Where does it leave yeah. to our game? Shitera, you are remarks. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the daggers are drawn, literally, uh, because 
Nabea and his team talking tough. Mm -hmm. At the other side, uh, you see uh, Kena Korir talking tough. Um, the, 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 the matter back in court. And you know what happens, as Isia has put it, that uh, the courts will derail the process. And definitely so, it has derailed. The AGM has not happened. And uh, the, 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 the timelines and the roadmap has been halted, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And now, where are we at uh, this point? We are looking at a situation where uh, CS Ababu Namamba will need to apply his diplomatic skills, mm -hmm. uh, not to use force again, mm -hmm. but to use uh, diplomacy to try and mediate uh, this process. Because uh, if uh, the courts uh, go by the uh, constitution, of course, they will put a block uh, because uh, uh, they will uh, say that, look, uh, the uh, FKF is not properly constituted. And then that will uh, affect uh, what FIFA says. And eventually, it will hamper our football. And that is why I'm saying uh, these are very, uh, very, very tough situation where it calls on the wisdom of the minister, uh, in this case, Ababu Namwamba, to try and navigate, ensure that uh, those who are opposing uh, Nick Mwendwa's uh, process to election mm -hmm. uh, are brought together. In fact, this will require dialogue. Because look at it this way. Uh, Nick Mwendwa has served his two terms um, yes. of four years. Mm -hmm. Constitutionally, he's out. Mm -hmm. But behind the scenes, he's trying to navigate on how he will legally uh, get, another term. get another term. So you cannot say that I'm navigating to get another term, and then on the other side, Hussein Mohammed is illegally uh, trying to buy. So it's an illegality on both ends, or a legality on both ends. So mm -hmm. it should it should it should dawn to him that you've done two terms, leave it to someone else. Mm -hmm. But if you are navigating behind the scenes, then allow every stakeholder on the table to deliberate. And if I go by the sentiments that the delegates were putting up, that's to Mejipanga, mm -hmm. then why fear uh, an, 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 a, a stranger, so to speak? Allow him, then then uh, clean the house. Sweet. That is my point. Sweet. Let, me, let me put a, 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 some statement there. <laughs> and you see, it's very, uh, let me be the devil's advocate today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have a lot of here, but uh, you see, it, you see, uh, it's so bad. Uh, it's unfair for any person who is uh, talking to try to say that expressly, whatever the delegates were saying, were saying it on behalf of Nick Mwendwa. Mm -hmm. Because Nick Mwendo was not in that uh, meeting, and essentially they were saying the question of members and non-members who constitutes the membership of FKF. Let me give an example. Today we have our body as post journalist, as Jack. If today we were to have votes and then we see people who are not members coming to vote, who will have questions about it. Mm -hmm. So it is unfair to imagine that this one is being done by expressly so and so. But now, let me put another interesting uh, uh, fact about this whole issue. After the court said that uh, the, the FKF leadership is illegally constituted, how did they, they come back again? How did we find them back at the office? It's very important to remember that after the election of President William Ruto, and after the change of guard, Amida Mohammed coming of uh, Ababu Namwamba, the truce between FKF and FIFA, which actually and, uh, brought uh, Kenya back to international football, is what actually brought FKF back to the office. So the question would be, now, what FIFA and the government agreed, is Ababu ready to walk or to vacate that agreement, which brought again a um, to office? Because it will amount to contradicting himself, really to agree that indeed, they are illegally in the office. And we'll be going uh, later on into that. And that, of course, leads us to our question of the day. And today we ask you, uh, what should be done to make FKF elections free and fair? What, in your view, should be done to make the FKF polls free and fair? Start texting to 2422. You can also ex us at Citizen TV Kenya at Isaac Swiller. Keep the conversation going. Hashtag Sporty Monday. And of course, we'll be sampling some of your responses at uh, the tail end of this program. And still on FKF elections, and of course, Zita Jimoy is on the scoreboard with the timelines of Nick Mwendoa's tenure. Zita? 
Thank you so much, Swila. And um, again, we're going to talk about the journey of Nick Mwenda when he was in the office and what has been happening until now. So the leadership, as you know, Nick Mwenda is the president of the FK, Kenya, uh, FKF, and uh, now Doris Petra is the vice president. Barrio Teno is the general secretary. So let's talk about the timeline of Nick Mwendwa. On 10th February 2016, Nick Mwendwa was elected as the FKF um, president by gathering 50 votes out of 77 at Kasarani and by that time he, um, taking over from Sam Nyamwea. Um, second, second thing, on 4th July 2022, the court announced FKF branch election for being non-inclusive. And here the court give, gave um, Nick Mwenda the go-ahead of to stay in the office until the next election of the next president. But on 17th October 2020, Nick Mwenda was re-elected in the second term. And by that time, he, he, he did get 17 um, votes out of 85. And continuing with his journey, again, in November 2021, CS Amina Mohammed disbanded FKF ordering audit of accounts appointed caretaker committee to run football. Um, to run football. And then again, in the same, same year, to November 2021, days after disbanding of the F Federation, Mwendwa was arrested over um, a lead of misappropriate of funds. And again, these funds, uh, the, about these funds, were the funds were in question was 200 million where to facilitate the Harambe Stars uh, preparation and participation in the AFCON 2019 in Egypt. And again, after that, 25th February 2022, Kenya was suspended by FIFA from the world football. You know how it affected us. On 6th July 2022, DPP withdraw case against Nick Mwendwa. But again, after the withdraw the case against Nick Mwendwa, on 7th July 2022, a day after the DPP withdrew the, the charges, Mwendwa is rearrested again. On 20th September 2022, FIFA FKF office at the FIFA Gold Project was reopened. And again, we, by that time, everyone was seeing light. And again, Ababu Namuamba was appointed the new um, sports minister on 27 September 2022. On 3rd November 2022, sports years, uh, Namuamba re reinstated Nick Mwendo back to the office. And that is, uh, that is uh, it was among the, the what, the... Um, among the, what, the things that FIFA wanted so that the office to be reinstated back first so that we can, our ban can be lifted. Again, on 28th November 2022, FIFA lifts Kenyan suspension from world football after nine months in dark. 29th March 2023, court dismisses the Kenya shillings 38 million theft case against Nick Mwenda. That was a very relief um, from our FKF president, Nick Mwenda. On, on 6th Jan 2024, FKF next meet to set the date for the AGM that was last Saturday, March 6, 2024. Again, on 8th February 2024, sports um, registrar Rose was secret to the FKF telling them that Federation, uh, uh, Federation Nick is inel ineligible to run for another term. So that is what we've been discussing about here. And then again, the last one is that on 15th March 2024, court order was issued that the FKF AGM was suspended. As, as we always ask, the way ICIA has already asked, who is going to benefit into this after the suspension of the AGM? Back to you, Sila. Thank you, Zita. And Wakili, maybe you can come in there. There is a question of eligibility and as Zita put it we've seen the sport register right to Nick or the Federation telling look you are not eligible to run for another term you've served your two terms and I think this argument is based on uh, the second schedule of the Sports Act 2013 on the other hand you look at Zurich basically the headquarters of FIFA and we saw FIFA boss Gian Infantino and another mandate after the FIFA Congress in, uh, in Chigali, Rwanda. Now, the question is, we have a football CEO, so to speak, Nick Mwendoa, who served his two terms, going by the Kenya's Constitution 2010 and explicitly the Sports Act 2013. FKF argues we are guided by FIFA statutes. 
And at FIFA, we've seen Infantino go for another term. How do we find a solution out of this? Well, the starting point, I think, should be, I forget the citation of the case, but I think last week or last week, but one, there was a ruling by the High Court stating that Athletics Kenya should hold fresh elections since the people there had already served two terms. Sure. So that should be the starting point. Now, where the federation, I think, the, where the confusion comes in is when that, you see, when Nick was elected, he was first elected in 2016 mm -hmm. using the 2012 constitution. Then last time when they did elections, they did it using the 2017 elections. And I think they tried to sneak in something that's saying this is a fresh term. So mm -hmm. if you get a mandate using the 2017 election, the, sorry, the 2017 constitution, that will constitute your first term. Mm -hmm. And then you can go for a second term. Mm -hmm. And then this also uh, is in line with what FIFA says because FIFA gives you three terms. Mm -hmm. However, when you read FIFA statutes and all the, you see when you read the entire, the legal handbook in its entirety, it usually states that the laws that are contained there, they're also, part of them are subject to the municipal laws of the country. Mm -hmm. So you see here, we are giving you two terms and that is what the law says here. So until the law is amended, I don't think any attempt by anybody to run for more than two terms mm -hmm. is going to be entertained by anyone, mm -hmm. especially now with the ruling that the High Court said that the Athletics Kenya officials must exit office. Must exit office and so fresh from elections. where you stand, two terms have been served. He need to exit and pave way for fresh blood. Well, that is unfortunately that is what the loss is. Mm -hmm. Let me, Suila, so jump in if you allow me and ask Wakili a question. Mm -hmm. Already we are seeing a conflict of uh, what he calls municipal law and the international you know, regulations of, of FIFA. Now, in the report that Shitera uh, did at the beginning of the program, he alluded to the fact that there would have been an amendment that would have uh, discussed extension of term so that it becomes three. Now, any time that there's uh, the Congress, the FKF Congress, passes with majority votes, uh, such an amendment to the constitution and it is ratified by fifa fifa will go by that and any attempt you know to go against it will amount to a contradiction like the one that led to the suspension how then do we go about this well you see unfortunately or fortunately even parliament passes laws and those laws when they are tested against the constitution they are found to be wanting so in this case that decision in itself to add a third term will be contrary to what the laws in Kenya provide. So you'll, you'll find that on its, in its face, the addition of a third term, you see it, when you take your returns to the sports registrar, the sports registrar cannot accept this. And then when cricket comes saying we want three terms, he say, the sports registrar says you can only serve two terms. When basketball comes and says mm. that our federation wants to serve three terms, mm. you are told you can only serve two terms. So that decision in itself by the Congress will be contrary to what the law provides. So until the law is changed, then we'll have a conflict. And actually, if you're just looking at uh, what we have on the screen there, that's part of the agenda of uh, the FKF at the AGM that aborted. And if you look at agenda number 12, basically, it was listed there. That's vote, uh, votes, votes on proposal for amendments to the Constitution. Uh, that's basically the FKF Constitution. And I believe the amendments here is to change uh, the term limit uh, to allow the president to go for a third term, which we are explaining. And it goes further to say the regulations governing the application of the Constitution and the standing orders of the General Assembly, if applicable. In the interest of time, Shitera, probably we can hear from you on this. How do we proceed with this matter, even as we wait for the court uh, ruling today? I think I, I, I laid my explanation very clear. Mm -hmm. uh, the wisdom of the CS Ababu Namwamba uh, will come in handy to try and um, bring the two factions together because as we uh, move forward, uh, we already have factions uh, clearly uh, marked and everyone is pulling uh, the weight uh, towards their direction. 
a faction led by uh, Muranga Seal chairman uh, and uh, uh, Eastern FKF uh, member Nabea. And on the other side, uh, another faction uh, which uh, is here says does not have the blessings of uh, Nick Mwendwa. In my view, uh, I think uh, with this uh, uh, clear demarcation, uh, who will suffer in this situation? The players, mm -hmm. the referees, the coaches, and the Kenyan football. Absolutely. So in my view, mm -hmm. uh, I, I said, let CS Ababu Namwamba apply his With diplomatic, diplomatic skills, skills, talk to FIFA mm -hmm. on guidance on how to maneuver this situation, mm -hmm. talk to FKF, uh, talk to uh, FKF President Nick Mwendwa and his team, then talk to the other opposing uh, team, try and bring them together because we are all looking at a direction where we will benefit the Kenyan football. Look at what is ahead of us. Uh, we have qualifiers for World Cup, qualifiers for AFCON 2025, and we are preparing for AFCON 2027. So in my view, this is a very dirty picture in not, front of us. Not forgetting about Chan and again, Sekafa yeah, yeah, yeah. back. So. Yeah. Absolutely. It's the number one stakeholder, the footballer, whose interest we need to take care of. And still staying on Afcon, Zita Jimoy went out to pick the opinion of the footballer or the fans on what they think over these FKF elections. Take a look. Football Kenya Federation annual general meeting was supposed to be held today the 16th day of March 2024. But again, it was suspended because of the court injunction. So I am here at Absa Grounds just to get the views of the football lovers. What do they think about this and how it's going to affect our football here in Kenya? This is the fan zone. I am your host, Zita Jimoy. <laughs> walikuwa kae wapangia mikakati tujue elections zitakuwa lini but venye wanazidi kujivuta na venye wanazidi kusongesha hii kitu mbali sioni tukifanya election hii mwaka na tusipofanya election hii mwaka na wana tukibani na lumu na tukibaniwa sioni tukio staff kwa hapa hivi kwetu AGM will for take place but it take place eh? and uh, as stakeholders of football to coward cause uh, you know tunafaa kwa na elections na unless elections as take place kama AGM ija Ijaitua. So, yu move in a pool you are to postpone your GM, ni mtu anajaribu kubai time wakai kwa ofisi. I don't know, it feels, you're feeling disappointed. I know, but yeah, we must obey the law. It is there for us to obey. And uh, whoever take the, took the matter to court, we shall obey. And uh, we as the fans, we are expecting uh, uh, a sooner resolution to this matter. Ata fans wana fawapewe na fasi kama ma delegates. Eh? So moving forward, I think it's high time. Kwa sababu, tuko among the countries na fawata kuhost AFCON 2027. So the more tunendelea kudilei na hizi marangol sapa kwetu, zinendelea kuna ro chances zetu za kufanya nini? Za kupuwa support ya kuhost Af AFCON. Watu wa kubaliana na wasikizane. Unelewa, kumekuwa na machanga moto nini nini watu wanaongea mbaya kwa Facebook. The delegates wala walikuwa kasarani jana. Kila watu sawa, kila mtu ni stakeholder kwa football hii Kenya juu. Si wote natu affect. Leo tukibaniwa, kila mtu natakuwa na hiyo. Kila mtu natumia. Kuna wachezaji, kuna sisi, wadau, na nini, na nini. So mazemi na omba tu, watu wakai chini na wasikizane. Expecting at least kwe na a new leadership in the country's football fraternity. Government kijaribu kuingiza mgu yake hapa mkono, tutabaniwa na FIFA. Tumekuwa wei kwa shadows, sababu tuliko tumebaniwa years sana. Until... Sia sababu na muamba wali intervene na ma tukajaribu kwa ku apply na everything tumerudishwa back kwa football. But I think it's so worrying for football stakeholders at such a time. Hii eh? AGM inafaa kwa call. Kwa sababu hiyo ndiyo rules na statutes za FKF na constitution yetu ya hapa inasema hivyo. Delegates, at least eh, kukue na like uh, kwa team, watuwe kama mfansi watano watano. Kwa hizo teams enziko kwa Premier League ama kwa NSL so that they can do the voting na ikuwe independent. Square us on a bahiwa. AGM ifanyike na waset date na elections ifanyi. Unless wakulio AGM, hakuna elections za kuwa held. Na so, as far as you know, tuko worried. Kwa sababu wasipo call, hiyo ofisi nendelea kuwa hapo, iku hapo illegally. Kuna mtu wanajaribu kucheza mind games hapa. Na anajua rules zote, na zile njia zinafa kufanyika. The FKF has failed the fans. We need to have more fans in the field, you see. Fans unajua, they play a, a big role kwa kutengeneza football in Kenya. So we need fans in the field. This is Fort Monday and 
it is the fun zone.